let's see if it'll turn on. This is gonna let me know if it works or not. Uh oh, oh, holy, holy crap, guys. Quick flyby, this bike is insanely, insanely fast. I cannot wait to do some footage of me riding, but for now, let me show you what tools I use to get this bad boy back running. So the first thing is just a common Razor scooter charger, rated at 24 volts. It has an output of 1500 milliamps or 1.5 amps. If you look there, there are the specs of that charger. All I did was clip the cord, and find the positive and negative outputs, and make this little positive and negative uh, cable right here to connect to my battery positive and negative and then the next one is your common bird or line scooter charger 36 volts showing an output of 42 volts at 2 amps so this is very important as you will see in the video these two common chargers are what I use to bring this bike back to life so I'm gonna go ahead and jump in break this bike apart and give you a detailed overview of exactly how I was able to revive this battery here we go guys Okay, so guys, I've already begun to tear this bike down. Um, I believe that this is the first video of its type on YouTube. This is some of the internals of the Bremo Impulse. Uh, I just basically took some of those fairing pieces off, so just a couple bolts here and there. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like under a Bremo. They got the batteries packed in there pretty nicely. Uh, the wiring doesn't look too bad. Basically, I am trying to find the source of the electrical issue. Uh, the buyer, I'm sorry, the seller I got it from told me that there was a uh, short in one of the wires so I'm looking to see if I can isolate that and see if I can't get this battery to charge basically when it's charged to uh, when it's connected to the J17 there's no response from the bike so what I'm guessing is that the uh, battery voltage may have dropped to a safe or critical level I'm hoping that it's not too low to where it can't be recharged but a lot of times with these batteries if it does have the uh, a good BMS it'll put into safety mode where it'll maintain a low state of charge uh, maintain a pretty much a safe low state of charge where it doesn't damage the batteries but it's it does not allow the bike to power up so I'm hoping that's what's going on so I'm just trying to get in here and find that short so I can maybe see if I can pump some juice in here I'm gonna have to figure out a custom charging solution to bring the voltage up because it's a 100 volt nominal system so my plan is to, if I have to, charge by the, in a cell by cell um, basis because I see we have our positive and negative in for each cell. So I'm going to remove all this this here so I can get to each cell. I'm going to measure the voltage at each cell and see where we're at. I don't know the exact specs of this. I actually have it right there. Fantastic. I just saw that, guys. It's a 14 volt nominal. So roughly 15 volts for each of these in there is one, two, three, four five six seven aha so that's i don't know what the exact chemistry is but that's that's very interesting i'm glad that bramo put this on there because 15 times 7 gives you the 105 so basically all i have to do is charge these to 15 volts i'm going to look at the individual voltage guys let me go ahead and uh get some of this stuff you know taken apart here uh, i'll give you a time lapse just to see how i remove some of this but yeah this hey so what is up guys so it is day two of trying to bring this Bramo Impulse back from the dead. So as you can see behind me, uh, after looking at that time lapse, uh, I was able to tear into this bike pretty well. Um, I have the batteries isolated, and I got it pretty much on like a life support system right now, where I'm doing uh, pretty much like intravenous uh, voltage straight to the batteries, uh, just charging them up really slowly, uh, taking my time with things. I've done calculations, so I've made these custom charges here out of some leftover scooter. Uh, charges that I have uh, laying around and I was able to do like a step up system where I'm pretty much going to be charging it from 24 volts uh, with my 24 volt charger from a Razor scooter up to 36 volts and 48 volts is kind of what I'm going to step up to because each one of these batteries is 15 volts uh, per nominal 14.8 so 15 volts so that means that two of them should have a voltage of around 30 volts uh, and I was actually able to break it up pretty slowly and looks like it is working. So let's take a look at what I have so far. All right, got you guys over here. So these are two of the 
seven. And when I first started, the battery voltage for these was only about 10 volts per pack. So if you look closely now, guys, so as you can see, the battery voltage there is 13.6 for that one. And 13.6 for that one. So I let this go for a long time yesterday. Uh, and then the total voltage for both of these is, as you can see that, 27 volts. And I let this sit overnight and the voltage stayed. So it, it held the charge. I was not seeing any internal resistance problems. So that is fantastic. Now back over to the bike. Guys, this thing is torn apart. And the thing about it, the engineering here was very, was pretty good. It wasn't super hard to take apart. Everything was pretty simple. And the battery layout is very simple. Um, and uh, everything basically is going according to plan. This is my little, as you can see earlier, that's the Razor charger. These are actually those bird scooter chargers, 36 volts. So that's pretty convenient. Then I have like a little DC bus set up here so I can get to those batteries. I didn't want to take everything out if I didn't have to. So that helps out with making sure everything stays fairly assembled because you know the part support for this is non-existent. So I don't want to break anything. So right now guys, yeah, I'm gonna let this go for a little bit longer. Everything is working. But my plan is to step the voltage up slowly and then the next step for these two battery packs is I'm going to actually put the 36 volt on here and get these up to 30 volts, 30 volts between the pair. And then the three on the bottom are charging in the same in the same circuit. So that means I want 45 volts. So basically, I want every one of these black boxes to be at 15 volts. That way I can uh, keep track of how the cells are balancing. That way when I connect the BMS and reconnect the battery pack, there isn't a surge of current anywhere that can blow up anything. So yeah, if everything goes according to plan, I should be able to drive this within a day or two. I want everything to sit and the vultures kind of to soak in. And I'm gonna keep you guys posted. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm super excited. I got this impulse for two grand, which is a crazy, uh, pretty pretty good deal as long as you know nothing blows up on me. Um, I think I, I can get this thing running without really having to buy anything extra. Alrighty guys, the absolute moment of truth. I have all the batteries wired back up after charging for days. Uh, let's see if it'll turn on. This is gonna let me know if it works or not. Uh oh, oh, holy, cr holy crap guys. Oh my God, okay. So guys, the Bramble has life. <gasps> oh, okay, recharge required, okay. Alrighty. Um, Wow, so yeah, let's, um, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more, but that's that's a fantastic sign. The Bremo, uh, the battery's charged up. Now, next thing is to see if I can get some power into this bad boy to essentially maybe drive it. But right now it's at, you know, the bare minimum to actually operate the vehicle, which is around 96 volts with my slow charge method. Uh, I was I didn't wanna push things, so I could only get it to around 96 volts. Uh, so I don't know the full state of the capacity of these batteries, but I'm going to try to do some more playing around. But yeah, it's good to know that we have power. Uh, let's try it one time. I got to figure out how to cut off this light. Uh, okay, so guys, I disconnect all the lights. Uh, and so far, I'm going to give you this update. It is charging. It's showing me that it's getting 12 amps. Sorry if there's a glare on there. This cord is pulling a good amount of heat, so I can tell that it is working. And I'm going to give you an update. I'm going to let this go because it seems to be happy. Everything is functioning. BMS is talking. Clipper Creek is charging. Because the good thing about these Clipper Creek chargers is that if there is a fault, I promise you it would not charge. Or if there is any type of uh, anything bad going on, they're usually pretty good about cutting power. But I'm going to still closely monitor it uh, because the uh, state of charge was very low and I'm bringing it up slowly so it looks like we're at three percent so we are getting some power guys and I think that my method with the very very slow charge that deep cycling so it can soak the voltage in there is helping things because we're not forcing 12 amps in here on completely dead batteries uh, I, I was able to get them up with very slow very dense charge rates basically around the one amp rate so it these batteries should have a good voltage soak. And you can see how each one of the BMSs is flashing in there. That's a good sign. 
That's a good sign there. Uh, I don't know if you can see the bottom ones, but it was a little flash in there. But yeah, let's let this go for however long it lets it. Uh. So there you have it. That's the whole setup, exactly how I broke it down step by step and got this bike back running. So let's check out some of the specs of it right now. So once I power it on, takes a second to initialize. Has a little bit of sound there. So let's go over what the spec shows. So right now I've been doing a little bit of riding. I'm gonna be showing you that content soon. It's showing 65% charge. Uh, if you press these two buttons here, it shows you the different voltage levels. So we have 106 volts right now. The bike has been charging very well. The performance is good. The battery life is very good. The range is good. So everything seems to be perfect with this bike. So what I'll do right now is just show you how the motor sounds. It's very unique with this bike being able to go into neutral. So let's go ahead to power it up. You hold this power button here. You'll see the tachometer swoop. Good. That lets me know that the bike is armed. Let's go back to our feature screen so we see that the bike is in neutral. So let's rev it up. Watch the tachometer. Holy crap. This bike is crazy. And when it's at a full charge, this thing is absolutely so much faster than my Zero DS that I used to have. It's, it's amazing, guys. Look down here. Let's hear the motor one more time. It almost sounds like it has a rev limiter. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna make, keep this video short. There's gonna be some riding content coming very soon, but I gotta get back to work on the budget build. Uh, you can also check that video out. I'm gonna have some series on that. So if you love this kind of electric motorcycle content, don't forget to like and subscribe and vote performance. I have a lot of cool stuff. I'm gonna be doing some giveaways. So yeah, guys, stay tuned for much more later.